Hi, my name is Emily Roberts, a developer advocate working on Chrome OS and Android devices with large screens. Big display sizes are here and getting bigger and more varied. Phones, foldables, tablets, detachables, Chromebooks, Chrome boxes with external displays, Chrome bases with integrated monitors, and more. And we are investing heavily in the Android framework, Jetpack, and Chrome OS. There has been a growing popularity with users for more screen real estate. And with nearly 100 million new Android tablets and a 92% growth for Chrome OS just last year, and with more than 250 million large screen Android devices currently in use, your app needs to be ready. In response to this growing momentum and to support apps on these devices, we are introducing 12L, a special feature drop just for large screens. We have been working with developers to understand their needs when it comes to developing for large screens, as well as upstreaming changes from OEMs to create a number of feature and API improvements that will land early next year to make Android 12 work even better across these devices. 12L includes a number of specific enhancements for developers, improved multitasking, a redesigned look to get the most out of the extra space, and compatibility modes to make small screen apps work better. From Android 12 onward, multitasking is the order of the day, and all apps will now run in a multi-window mode. The main thing to know about this is that your app may be running in a split screen or in a window beside another app. This is especially important to keep in mind if you are rendering your own UI elements or need specific window dimensions, or if your app needs access to exclusive hardware devices like uh, cameras and microphones. To support multitasking, 12L brings updates to the UI, including an improved taskbar for app switching. We know that in the past, getting into split screen mode was not always easy for users. The new taskbar simplifies quickly switching between apps and finding your way back to the home screen. On larger screens, the taskbar makes it easy to drag apps into split screen and multi-window modes. Because all apps will now be able to be run in a split screen mode or a separate window, regardless if they are declared to be resizable, it is important to update your app so that it can seamlessly adapt to size changes without being restarted or put into a compatibility mode. The taskbar also moves the three button navigation bar to the side of the screen to make things easier for users holding a large screen device. 12L also brings a number of user interface updates to the system UI. This includes better home screen layouts, an overhauled notification look and feel, and bouncers to make things like pin input easier to do. Your app will automatically take advantage of the new system look with no work needed on your part. We are also updating system apps like settings and the setup wizard to make better use of screen space. If your app is locked to a portrait or landscape orientation and is not resizable, it could get shown in a compatibility mode when users enter split screen, a foldable device is unfolded, or when it is used in a multi-window environment like Chrome OS. This helps make sure apps look and function as originally intended. We are making updates to the functionality as well as the styling and presentation of compatibility modes and while all this means that non-resizable apps will continue to work for users and will integrate better with the system, it will still not provide the ideal experience. It is up to you to optimize. We will also be making some updates to the Play Store to help users find the best apps for large screens. First, we're separating out ratings and reviews for apps on large screen devices. Secondly, we're updating our quality process to check for app resizability and layout on large screens. We are also going to be looking at input support and other features for large screens. This will allow us to surface apps to users that provide the best experience for their devices. You'll hear more about this next quarter as we prepare to launch these changes in 2022. The 12L feature drop comes with new APIs and a new SDK level. 32, to allow you to easily target the new features. Note, the annual Play Store requirement to increase your target SDK 
will apply to Android 12 only, so SDK 31, and will not require you to move to 32. Start testing all these new features and APIs today. Get the 12L developer preview and prepare your app for the public release early next year. You can also use the Android Studio emulators with the 12L system image. Don't forget to try out split screen, fold, and rotation events to make sure your app looks great throughout common user journeys. There is nothing like testing on real devices, and soon you'll be able to test out these features on the Lenovo P12 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. We are pleased about all the 12L updates and look forward to continuing to add even more great features and large screen support in upcoming releases of Android. I'm now going to pass it over to Andri to talk about Jetpack updates. Jetpack Window Manager is a library that gives you backwards compatible APIs to work with window metrics and sizes, and it's now in beta. It also provides detailed information about display features like folds and hinges and device configurations. We'll cover the stable APIs available in the library, and we'll take a look at some of the new experimental tools in the current and upcoming versions to help your app look great on large screens. The library takes advantage of the latest features in 12L, but also works with prior platform versions down to API level 14. Let's start with window metrics. In Android 11, a new set of window manager APIs was introduced to give you accurate measurements of the current window your app is running in. On large screen devices, it's very likely that your application won't be occupying the entire display, since the users engage in split screen and other forms of multi-window much more often. On the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold series, we've seen a 7x increase in split screen usage. Another example is when the window is letterboxed on a large display in a different orientation. It's important to make your app fully resizable, so we've got a whole talk dedicated to that. But how to know the size of your activity? The Window Metrics API returns the correct pixel size of the window in all possible states and brings this capability all the way back to SDK level 14. It also informs you about the maximum possible metrics if the user expands the application to display, so that you can select the right resources to load ahead of time. Remember, window metrics can change at runtime, so the recommended way is to update the values when the activity is first created and when the configuration changes using Window Metrics Calculator. Do not use the deprecated display APIs like GetRealMetrics or GetRealSize, or you may get unexpected size values. Another key component to making your app intuitive for users on all device form factors is to provide different layouts. We've heard your feedback that knowing which screen sizes to develop for is difficult in our diverse device ecosystem. Now, Jetpack makes this easier than ever with window size classes. They are being introduced to provide opinionated layout breakpoints for you to know how to adapt your UI. Window size classes will be useful both when selecting the right layouts for different device types and when responding to window size changes in multi-window. Historically, users mostly interacted with one app at a time in Portrait, but tablets are commonly used in landscape, and with foldable devices and different multi-window modes, it will be more common for apps to go through large and small window sizes in a single session, and it's best to support as many as possible. Look for these in Window Manager Jetpack 1.1 and learn more about building Android UIs for any screen size talk. There is a big potential for innovation, especially on foldable devices. With an increasing number of those on the market, you can get one step beyond just making it compatible with large screens and adapt to different device states when users fold or unfold while your app is running. Supporting different modes will bring new ways to interact with your app and new experiences to enjoy. For example, one common posture on foldable devices today is tabletop, best for watching videos or taking calls hands-free. The device is positioned so that part of the display is at a comfortable viewing angle, and part is lying flat on a stable foundation, making it suitable for interactive elements. Let's take a look at how the library can help you with it. To determine the posture, you can use Folding Feature, a class that enables you to monitor the state of a foldable device. An application can receive events when there is a change in the device's hinge, and use the feature type, orientation, and state to update the UI around it if necessary. There are two possible states, flat and half-opened. For flat, you can consider the surface to be open entirely flat, though in some cases it may still be split by a hinge and not fully continuous. For half-opened, the window always has at least two logical areas. The information about feature layout 
is provided by a window info repository. To start and stop the event collection, we can use a lifecycle scope, tracking while activity is visible. You can then use the information available in the window layout info object to update your layout. Folding feature includes information like hinge orientation and state. We can use these values to check if the device is in the tabletop mode, half open with the hinge horizontal. To learn more about this, check the complete guide on building for foldable devices in our documentation. And there is a dedicated talk about optimizing media applications. Look for best practices for video apps on foldable devices. To make maintaining these new layouts easier in the long run, we also have new test APIs in Jetpack Window Manager. We introduced a dedicated window testing module in the library. Here is an example of creating test instances of the main classes. Notice that activity is the only parameter in folding feature function without a default value. The current default configuration for a test folding feature is set to be horizontal across the middle of the screen, and it is half opened. Window layout info publisher rule is useful for testing UI and how it responds to folding features. You can chain it together with an activity scenario rule. The publisher rule does not fully replace an end-to-end -end test in a device term. For example, a real device will update window layout info for orientation, but when using the publisher rule, you will have to update the window size and window layout info yourself. After the test rule has been set up, you can use the override window layout info method to replace the current layout info object. Now that we've covered the stable features, let's explore the new experimental additions to the library. We recognize that converting existing legacy code bases to support large screens may be challenging. For some applications that have over time invested into using activities for individual screens, switching to multi-pane layouts via fragments or other tools may incur significant refactoring and a lot of team resources. In order to make this transition easier, we are introducing activity embedding, a set of window managed jetpack features for modern large screen devices that allow flexible organization of activity windows. Its first UI implementation is focused on taking advantage of large screen space by showing activities side by side in multi column layout. For example, you might have separate activities for these list and detail screens, but you'd like to show them together on large displays. While I recommend you to re architect your app to use a single activity, we understand it's pretty costly. This feature enables you to optimize for large screen layout with the app structure you already have. And the most exciting part is that adopting the feature may require little to, in some cases, no existing code modification. Let's take a closer look. The feature is designed with compatibility in mind. The library automatically chooses the right presentation type based on the available screen space and the settings you provide. This allows avoiding branching in your in-app navigation code to handle small and large screen in different sections. The library also supports screen and window size changes at runtime. So if the user folds or unfolds the device or resizes in multi-window, the presentation is automatically updated for you. We're also staying true to the existing ordering of activities in your application. We identify two containers or activity stacks in each split, primary and secondary. The secondary container is always considered to be on top of the primary one. If the screen space is small, it will be the same stack of activities as usual. But if there is enough space, the two stacks can be shown side by side. Here's an example of what happens when you have multiple activities in the secondary container. They automatically show up in the same bounds when they were launched. The existing activity launch and intent resolution rules apply. The library also supports navigating deeper than one level, creating multiple splits. It always shows at most two panes, shifting the early creating panes off screen when launching the new ones. In this example, if you have an existing split with activities A and B, and you want to put a new activity C to the side, it creates a second split with B and C. Once again, the container will be considered on top in terms of Z order. This ordering means that when the user closes a foldable device and continues using the app, you can resize and reposition the container maintaining the order of activities. The top activity in the secondary stack will be automatically expanded, but ready to be shown side by side again if the user unfolds the device. There is one different use case, which we call placeholders. Sometimes an application would show a top level navigation list in the main page, and there is no secondary content to show until the user makes a selection. However, in order to make the best use of available space, 
and for consistency, it would make sense to still show a split immediately after opening the app, but maybe leave secondary page mostly empty. On the other hand, when starting on a smaller screen and after folding the device, we don't want to show an empty page on top. We added a dedicated option to support the placeholder use cases to the library. Let's check how to integrate the feature into your app. It just takes a couple of steps. First of all, declare the library dependency in your build file. Next, create an XML file in your assets and provide the rules defining which activity should be split and the properties of the splits. In this example, I want to put activities A and B in a split when B is launched on top of A. To do this, I add a single split pair rule with default configuration and a single filter that is used to match activity component names. When activity B is started from A, the filter will be checked and matched, and a new split will be automatically created by the library. We are giving you flexibility by providing different types of rules for different scenarios. You can find out more in our documentation. Alternatively, you can use the runtime APIs to add or remove the rules if necessary. Next, we need to inform the library about these rule definitions. In this example, we are using the Jetpack App Startup library to perform initialization before other components of the app load and activities start. In order to do this, we add the library dependency in the build file and the following entry in Android manifest. Here, we specify which initializer class should be used. Lastly, we add the initializer class implementation. You may be familiar with the structure if you're already using App Startup in your app. The rules are set by providing the XML resource ID with the definitions to split controller.initialize. That's it! The library will track activity launches that occur from different points in your code base, check the intents that are being used, and which activities are firing them. And if a matching rule is found, a new split will be created and managed by the library. This feature will be available on large screen devices that support the latest version of Window Manager Jetpack extensions. You can use it today using the 12L emulator. And you can find this feature soon on real devices, like Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. On devices where it's not available, it will fall back to regular presentation when activities always appear stacked, fully overlapping each other. So you don't need to worry about devices that are not supported yet. And you can always check if the feature is available with a dedicated runtime API. We're also experimenting with other ways of interacting with multi-display devices. One exciting example is rear display mode that allows using the high-quality primary camera for selfies while showing the preview when the device is unfolded. We are working on a new set of APIs to support the use case. Look for it among the experimental Window Manager Jetpack APIs in the upcoming versions. Back to Emily to talk about Chrome OS. Thanks, Andre. Android tablets and foldables are really getting big. Let's talk a bit about Chromebooks. For years now, Chrome OS has brought users the ability to easily install and run Android apps on large screen devices. Lately, we have added a number of improvements to the Android app experience, like better picture-in-picture -picture support, a low-latency stylus library, and better presentation of apps not designed for large screens. Picture-in-picture -picture now looks and works even better on Chrome OS. Using the standard Android picture-in-picture -picture APIs will get you the newest appearance and functionality without additional effort. Let's quickly review those APIs. Start by indicating picture-in-picture -picture support in the manifest file, and then engage it with enter picture-in-picture -picture mode. You could also do things like automatically enter picture-in-picture -picture when the user backgrounds your activity by using on user leave hint. Remember, you will likely want to adjust your UI in this mode. And to do that, look for the callback on picture in picture mode change and make the necessary changes. In May, we announced the launch of the Chrome OS Low Latency Stylus API to get you the lowest possible latency for your painting and drawing apps. Check out the API and demo app on GitHub today. Android apps that are designed only for small screen portrait phones can look and perform badly on large screen tablets, Chromebooks, or external monitors if they are stretched out to a full screen view. Issues can range from just a, a suboptimal layout to crashing if the app does not correctly handle multi-window or resizing events. Like on tablets and foldables, Chrome OS now has a compatibility mode that shows apps that are designed for small screen mobile devices in a phone size or tablet size window. 
The user can easily change the mode of this window or enable freeform resizing if they want, but the UI lets them know that the app may not perform as expected in a full large screen mode. This helps Chrome OS provide expected behavior and stability while still giving users the freedom to interact with the apps the way they want to. Ideally, users won't see your app in the compatibility mode, right? Let's cover the most important things you need to do to make sure that is true on both Chrome OS and Android tablets and foldables. Number one, provide appropriate large screen layouts for different form factors. Number two, test your app to make sure it handles folding events, rotation, being moved to split screen, and freeform resizing. Jetpack components like view model simplify maintaining state and provide expected behaviors for your users. Be sure to test these different layout possibilities on real devices or emulators. Number three, handle input well across touch, keyboard, mouse, and trackpad, as well as other more specialized inputs like stylus or game controllers, depending on your app's needs. A great way to dive deeper into these topics is our other large screen talks at ADS. Learn how to make your layout look great and adapt well while handling input correctly. If your app is looking great on large screens in Chrome OS already, or if you want to know more about where to start with optimization, let us know by visiting the link here. And remember, detailed documentation about optimizing for Chrome OS and large screens can be found on chromeos.dev. Foldables, tablets, and Chromebooks are becoming more popular than ever. A lot can be done to optimize your app right now and we are excited about the new features we are releasing soon to make apps work even better. Explore the new 12L APIs by using the emulator and downloading the 12L developer preview today. Start optimizing your app using Jetpack Window Manager to be fully resizable with accurate window metrics, enable new features like posture detection, and make maintaining your large screen layouts easy with activity embedding and test APIs. Don't forget to add great large screen layouts and include keyboard, mouse, and other input support. And with that, you are ready to adapt your apps for large screens. Thanks for watching.